Welcome back to Apterabytes. Today I wanted to do a video on a vehicle that came across my radar recently called the Squad Solar. So this is a four-wheeled vehicle pictured here with the two founders which are Robert and Chris and they are former Lightyear employees and they have been trying to put together this vehicle in the Netherlands. They are hoping to get this vehicle out into the European Union in 2024. So what's really interesting about this vehicle is that it will have a solar roof and they are planning to have about 13.6 miles of solar range per day in Breda, Netherlands, which is down here in southern Netherlands. And that's an area that doesn't get very much sun, uh, pretty close to Manchester, which is one of the lowest sun exposure parts of the world that is well inhabited. And they calculated that it would get about 19.2 miles of solar range in Las Vegas, which is where they were about six days ago for CES. So here's the solar roof. It seems much more modular than the Aptera solar roof. It seems like something that you can actually detach and replace more easily. But it also looks a lot more like traditional solar panels and does not have that signature Aptera diamond solar look to it. So the vehicle is supposed to get up to 6.4 kilowatt hours of power with four of these battery packs. It comes standard with two of these battery packs. And with four of the battery packs, the maximum range is about 62 miles. It comes standard with heat. But interestingly, it does not come with doors. To add on doors, it's about $850. And to add air conditioning, it's about $1,250. The main reason that I wanted to show this vehicle is because of the price. So if you include doors and air conditioning, the total price comes out to about $8,700. A little look at the interior of the vehicle. There's not much of an infotainment system at all. You can see that they just put their laptop here in this little area where you can place things. And it does come with cup holders and USB charging. And it comes with one wiper. You can see in this picture that you can fold down the second seat and use it for storage. And there's also some storage behind the seats as well. So the big question would be safety and security. So they say that it's very safe for its class, whatever that means. Uh, it, it does have a roll cage similar to the Aptera, but there's no mention of airbags. Sort of an interesting design where they have the wheels come out past the bumper so it is pretty difficult to damage the bumpers. So the big thing with this vehicle is the cost. So if you get the doors and you get the air conditioning, the cost of a standard two-seater, which is the first vehicle that they're coming out with, is about 34% of the cost of an Aptera. So again, that's about $8,700 compared to $25,900. Some of the specifications of this vehicle are very important to mention because they are very different from the Aptera. So you've got a maximum speed of about 28 miles per hour for this two-seater vehicle, which is about 25% of the maximum speed of Aptera. There is no infotainment system, as I mentioned earlier. Now you are getting about 20 solar miles 
per day, which is quite substantial for the price. And for many people, this will allow them to commute to and from work if they live in the city or if they live near work pretty much for an entire lifetime. But it wouldn't leave much for being able to drive anywhere else. If it only gets up to about 28 miles per hour, you can imagine that the acceleration would be pretty slow, but these figures have not been shown because the vehicle cannot actually do a 0 to 60 time. And again, for the $8,700, you do get the doors and the air conditioning, but I'm not sure how much it costs to get the additional two batteries that can fit into the vehicle. So for that price, you're talking about 31 total miles on a single charge. That's about 12% of what Aptera's base model gets you, which is the 250 mile model. And then again, I mentioned that there's no mention of airbags. So this is a pretty decent depiction of the actual dimensions of the squad vehicle compared to Aptera. So it is less than half the length of Aptera, so you can fit it into pretty much any parking space. And they even show on their page that you can fit two or three of these into one parking space if you park with the wheels against the curb. And then the height is just slightly higher than Aptera. Now there is mention on their page about an L7 vehicle. The one that I've been showing is the L6 and the L7 would be a four-seater that they have been talking about. It's not even in really design or production yet, it's just something that they have been hoping to do. And so when I spoke with the founders, they wanted me to mostly focus on the two-seater. I think if I were to get this vehicle, I would want a four-seater because it would be a little different than the Aptera, but I would also want certain specifications. So the four-seater, they are planning to have a maximum speed of 43 miles per hour. I think for most people, or at least for myself, I would want a vehicle that goes up to about 54 miles per hour so that I can drive in most 45 mile per hour roads comfortably. I think when you're talking about getting up to 55 and 65 miles per hour, you're talking about highway speeds, and I think that's something that I don't necessarily need in a vehicle in addition to the Aptera. So if the two-seater is going to be released into the European Union in 2024, then I would imagine that the four-seater, which is not even in production yet, would be at least 2025 for the European Union. And then you're talking about probably 2026 or later for the United States and North America. I would suspect that there would be quite a price increase, and so the comparison to the Aptera would be even more important based on the price increase. Let me know in the comments below what you think of a four-seater vehicle that goes up to 43 miles per hour. Is that something that you may want in addition to your Aptera, just to be able to get everyone else around in your family and to be able to get friends around if they come to visit? Would it be too slow? Would you want it to go up to about 55 miles per hour or even 65 miles per hour? Or is that something you would not want in a vehicle that doesn't necessarily have the safety necessary to be able to go at that speed? And then the big question would be delivery cost coming from the Netherlands when you compare it to Aptera. You would suspect that there would be a pretty substantial cost just to get it over to the United States. So a few more thoughts on the L7. I would want to know what the total range could be on the L7. Could they fit another battery pack in there to get the range closer to 75 miles? Would it have a larger roof and get more of a solar range than the 10 to 20 miles of the L6 two-seater? Could they make it safer if they were able to make it go faster and would there be any way to make it eligible for the tax credit? Could they produce it in the United States? Could they use battery 
minerals from the United States. This vehicle, if it were available this year or before this year, before the Inflation Reduction Act goes into effect, would probably have been eligible for about $3,000 of federal tax credits. You're talking about taking the price down to about $5,700, which is pretty amazing. So I just wanted to put this vehicle out there. There's not much press about this vehicle. It's, in my opinion, more of a glorified golf cart than an automobile that you can take out on the roads. But for some people who live in the city, some people who live very close to work, this may be the perfect vehicle for them. So let me know if this is something that you would be interested in learning more about. I have been talking to the founders about the vehicle and I am trying to get more information on the vehicle and I will put it out in the description section if I find out any more helpful details about this squad solar vehicle.